Hey, super excited to be here with everyone and talking about GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps, which is a mouthful everyone knows. So we call it GASDO internally for short. So don't worry, we're not stuck with a super long name all the time, but just some of the time. So if you attended any of our other build sessions, you may know that uh, GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps, one last time I promise, is now in public preview. There is a QR code on screen. I'll come back to us at the end of this talk as well. But there is also a short link. And then the second link there is also linked to our documentation for configuration, feature availability, and some general info if you're interested in what GitHub Advanced Security is. I'll talk about that more in this demo as well, of course. So Charles kind of maybe sold you on Gazdo already. But in case you aren't already sold, let's talk a little bit more about Advanced Security and what you can expect if you're purchasing GitHub Advanced Security for Azure DevOps. Sorry, I lied third time. Let's go into Azure DevOps. So coming into Azure DevOps under our repos tab, we have this brand spanking new tab called Advanced Security. Of course, when you come here, you're going to get an enablement screen. So let's show you how you can go from unenabled and unaware of what vulnerabilities lie in your repositories to having a much easier path forward with developer first focused security experiences in Gazdo. We'll navigate to the bottom left tier of project settings. Scroll down to repositories under the repos section. And I know it's a sparse project and hopefully you have a little bit more in your repos here. But you can see that we already have one repository with a new shield icon, which is gonna be a quick shorthand way to say, hey, we have Gazdo enabled for this repo. So we'll click this new repo, Lightning Demo, and we have this also new card at the top here that says Advanced Security. It's gonna be a toggle, so let's go ahead and flip on Advanced Security. There'll be a confirmation of begin billing, and also don't worry, not anyone can just come in and turn on billing for your repository. If you are interested in billing, we can talk about that more offline, as I know that can be a longer conversation too. For now, we'll hit begin billing and turn on advanced security, and that's it. That's my demo. <laughs> I wish, right? A little bit more that we have to, thank you, thank you. A little bit more that we have to do, although there are a few benefits that come with turning on this toggle. We obviously have this brand new checkbox here called block secrets on push, and I'll also have a brand new uh, scanning kicked off as a result of turning on advanced security. So there are three components to advanced security that we brought over from GitHub advanced security to Azure DevOps. Secret scanning, dependency scanning, and code scanning. I'll focus first, first on, the, on secret scanning here, and then we'll move on to the other two tools. Secret scanning and advanced security has two different components. The first is going to be a repository scan, which goes through all of your history, all of your files, and all of your branches to make sure that you don't have any exposed secrets lying in wait in your repository. The second is going to be push protection, which is going to prevent any further secrets from being exposed by blocking the secret at push time, and then all your developer has to do is just remove that secret from the commit, squash merge to make sure that there's no further evidence that the secret ever existed, and it's a much easier process. So that's how we are starting to shift left in the security process in secret scanning. So let's take a really quick look at push protection, and then I'll dive into repository scanning and what some of those alerts may look like for your repository. We'll navigate back to files, and I have a very handy file called secrets.txt. Now, maybe we already have some secrets in here, but I also have another ADO pat handy just in case I accidentally needed to commit it. We'll go over here, try to commit it, and you also notice that as this is loading, we're using the web UI. Secret scanning push protection is integrated directly into Azure DevOps Git, so whether you're using the web UI or the command line interface through an IDE, you'll be protected. Now we can see that we have this great commit or block message here that says the push was rejected because it contains one or more secrets. We also have a direct info of where the secret was found, the line number, the columns, and also the type of secret, just to make it a little bit easier for you. And that's secret scanning push protection. It really simplifies the job, rather than having to go in and actually revoke secrets, cause line site outages, and see what else is actually happening with secrets. Let's navigate back to the advanced security tab and talk a little bit more about repo scanning as well for advanced security. So this is going to be the new advanced security hub. And again, I'll get to setting up dependency scanning and code scanning for everyone in just one second. But navigating over to the secrets tab, we can see that we found those other Azure DevOps PAT tokens that we already exposed within our code. And that scan ran pretty quick too. 
Now, if it's a larger repository, it may take a little bit more time, but trust me, we'll find those codes, that we'll find those secrets regardless. Let's also talk a little bit about what kind of information you get when you click into this detailed secret alert. And if this chooses not to load, I have a backup. So this is a secret alert for a ADO pat. We have a location card, so if we click this, it'll take us directly to the affected line and file where the secret was found, as well as the specific commit in which it was introduced. We also have a general recommendation of revoking the secret and then storing it back securely in a more secure manner, such as using Azure Key Vault. But generally speaking, at Microsoft, we consider a secret to be compromised when it's exposed because, well, it's in your source code. Anyone can go back through history, find it, and at that point, you're a sitting duck for a compromise in your code. The last thing I wanna call out about secret scanning is that you do have to manually close secret scanning alerts. We encourage people to do this because it means that you actually have to come in and say, hey, I revoked the secret and I confirmed that I've taken it out of my code base and follow whatever mediation process my enterprise encourages you to follow. I'll also quickly talk about these other two options here of how you can dismiss an alert that you may deem to be a false positive or acceptable risk to your enterprise. They're gonna look the same for the other two domains, so I'll spend the time talking about it here that, you know, simply put, you can either choose to accept the risk or deem it as a false positive. There's also the option to add a comment, again, if your enterprise has some other requirements around documentation or otherwise justifications of why you are dismissing an alert. All right, that was secret scanning. Let's move on to other, tool, other two domains which require a little bit more setup. So these two are going to be pipeline-based tools. Dependency scanning is going to be your software composition analysis tool, or SCA, and it's going to detect both direct and transitive dependencies in your open source components. We have a wide variety of package manager support and language support, so don't worry about that either. Dependency scanning is a really easy tool to set up. In whatever pipeline you like to set up, you just navigate to right after your build steps, and hit insert on the dependency scanning task, and that's it. The reason why dependency scanning task is build-based and why we recommend you put it after your build is that dependency scanning actually goes through and follows the execution of your build to find out what, de what dependencies are resolved throughout the build process. We don't just read your package manager file and hope for the best. We do something a little bit more accurate. So the next thing to set up is going to be code scanning. Code scanning is our static analysis uh, software tool, static analysis tool powered by CodeQL, which is also the same engine that GitHub Advanced Security on GitHub uses. CodeQL also has a wide variety of language support, including C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Kotlin, and Beta, Swift, uh, TypeScript, of course, with JavaScript, and I'm sure there's something else I'm forgetting as well. Oh, Python, Ruby. CodeQL is gonna be a little bit more task intensive in the sense that there are a minimum of three different tasks that we want to add into our pipeline to scan. The first is going to be initialize CodeQL task, which actually goes through and analyzes the, the data flow of your source code to get a more accurate picture of where things are going. You're gonna to wanna to add that before any of your build steps as the first thing that occurs. Also, I know there are some YAML errors, totally fine. We're just doing this for the demonstration. I have a proper build that's already completed too. The next task you're gonna wanna add is going to be the perform code kill analysis task. And this goes in and actually executes different code kill, code kill meaning code language, query language, code query, query language, geez. Um, and it goes in and executes those queries against the database created by the code kill init task. And you'll want the analyze task to be laying somewhere after your build steps as well. And then the last task that we're going to need to go ahead and add into our pipeline is this publish results task. What this does is it takes the resulting analysis created by the code kill analysis task, a very aptly named task CC, and submits the resulting serif file back to the advanced security service to be shown in that advanced security hub that we were talking about earlier. So for the sake of this demo, I won't try to run this and hope for the best, because it may take a while. But with this setup, you're ready to go and start your first scan for your repository. Let's just quickly look. This is an already completed pipeline that has all the build steps included. Your basic custom build steps here for a C-sharp project. 
And let me quickly navigate to the completed run for this pipeline. The code kill dependency or the code kill build analysis output is not as interesting, so I'll quickly just show you what the dependency scanning output looks like. We take a snapshot point in time of what components are included in your build, and you can see that we also identify between transitive and direct, or number of total components found, and number explicitly referenced, meaning your direct dependencies. You can also see that we show a quick point in time of what vulnerabilities are associated with each of your components, and if you need, you can come back and use this as an artifact. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, artifact or um, just point in time snapshot of what one of those uh, were present within your build. So that's all the setup process for advanced security. We toggled on advanced security, which enabled the secret scanning and also push production. And then we set up our pipeline tasks to include dependency scanning and the code scanning tasks. Now let's just take a quick look back at the advanced security tab to see what we can find for each of these tools. This is the alert hub for advanced security. We're gonna have a pretty similar look across each of our domains, but I wanna call out a few things on the dependency scanning tab uh, so I don't have to call them out later. We're gonna have a filter here at the top bar, and I'm not sure why this is showing up, so let's pretend like it's not there. Uh, we have a filter bar at the top here with a branch, so if you are scanning on multiple branches, you can select to view by specific branches. State, so you can see what's been open and what's been closed. Pipelines, so if you do have multiple pipelines that have the dependency scanning task included, you can also filter by pipeline. Package, so which vulnerable packages have been detected across your repository, and then severity. The last thing I wanna highlight is that the Solar UX is already by default sorted by severity, so your most critical findings are listed at the top, and it's going to descend in criticality. So you'll find your medium and lows closer to the bottom of the list. Let's find out what lies in wait in this alert. So this is going to be a dependency scanning alert. It's going to have a recommendation at the top, location of where the package was found, and also a description. And also you can learn more by linking out to the GitHub advanced, uh, sorry, GitHub security advisory database, which is where we pull uh, our advisory findings from. The last thing for dependency scanning alerts to mention is that we do ad ad identify between a direct dependency alert and a transitive dependency alert. So you can see here, all I have to do for mediation is upgrade from 171 to 240. Pretty simple, it's a direct dependency alert and I just have to upgrade PyJWT. We also have, this is another direct dependency. We have another alert here where we have a, a more complicated finding details here. The vulnerable package is URL lib3, but we have root dependencies that depend on this vulnerable version of URL lib3. So, the most straightforward path is going to look for versions of root dependencies that already have this non-vulnerable non version included. However, in some cases where they may not be a new version updated, you will need to override the specific package. All right, last thing to show y'all is going to be code scanning alerts. Again, same filter bar, alert sorted by severity, and a very similar look and feel across our other uh, tool domains, of course. We have the location card hearkening back to the secrets alert where if you click on the hyperlink, it'll take you back to the direct line of code where you need to make changes. We have a description, recommendation, and more in-depth example of the specific vulnerability that we've highlighted for your repo. And again, references and whatnot if you wanna be more educated about what's happening and where you can get more resources and details on this vulnerability. All right, so that is how I got advanced security set up for my repository in just a matter of minutes and went from having no idea what was happening to having a pretty crystal clear idea of where I need to actually go take action steps and work with my developers to get a better idea of what needs to go get fixed. Gasdo has a lot coming up and I'm super excited to be sharing these features with y'all and I really hope you give Gasdo a try. As Charles mentioned in our previous demo, we are working on a lot of cool things and we really hope that you'll join us to help make that future better. Thank you.